Hey guys, Mac Tech Genius here, and today we're taking a look at the Unify HD and Unify Pro access point from Ubiquiti. This is not your typical consumer router. These are high-end wireless access points that are designed to handle the large-scale traffic and clients associated with contemporary prosumer networks. Just to provide a little background on my network, I prefer to hardwire everything with Ethernet. All of my devices with Ethernet ports are plugged in, but obviously wiring old devices is not always a feasible approach, such as for laptops, smartphones, tablets, and smart home products. I previously had three Apple Airport Extremes and a single time capsule to fulfill my Wi-Fi needs for my 50 plus wireless clients. While the Apple Airport Extreme was very reliable, it was definitely dated, given its last update in 2013. I sought to find a viable replacement, especially since I'm on a gigabit fiber optic network connection. After comparing wireless products from a variety of manufacturers, including ASUS and Netgear, I decided to opt for Ubiquiti as they offered the best value and performance and provided the features I was looking for. The Pro is the more affordable and conventional solution. While the performance is subpar compared to the more premium HD, the Pro is more conventional and a popular solution. So what is exactly the difference between the Pro and HD? The HD is Unify's new third generation product, while the Pro is considered to be second gen. The HD supports multi-user MIMO at 4x4, and thus increases throughput compared to the Pro's single user 3x3 MIMO. But very few devices currently support 4x4 and even 3x3, so while there are still certain benefits, you won't likely see the full performance as of yet. Unify Access Point features two Ethernet ports on the back. One is the primary PoE connection coming from your switch or PoE injector, while the other is an output, so you can connect another network device and essentially daisy chain. On the HD, however, you can also wire two Ethernet ports via link aggregation and thus create a 2 gigabit link. This will probably be beneficial when you have multiple data hiding clients. The HD can support a staggering 500 Wi-Fi clients, while the Pro can still hold a decent amount of 200. Both access points include similar accessories. The HD is slightly heavier and larger. You get the access point, ceiling, and wall mount, and a PoE injector. With PoE, you only need a single Ethernet cable going to your access point, thus wiring is a lot simpler. I have mine connected to the switch and powered from my network closet. It's also on a UPS, so the access point continues to function even if the power goes out. As far as the design go, I really like the minimalistic design. It fits into any environment and doesn't have a crazy design with a bunch of antennas. Here is a size comparison with an iPhone 7 Plus. The access point is managed using the Unify controller, which is essentially a web app that allows you to manage all of your Unify devices through a centralized interface. It's very easy to install and use. For the best experience, it's recommended that the controller is installed on a computer that runs 24-7, though you can put it on any other computer and only run the controller when you need to make configuration changes. I have mine installed on a Mac Mini that stays on all the time. The controller is also available for Windows, and they even have a Linux cloud key that runs the controller if you don't have a computer that remains on all the time. Currently, I have the Unify AC and HD provisioned with the controller. If I also have a Unify router or switches, I would have additional features, such as deep packets inspection that monitors all the services on the network. On the controller dashboard, I can see the number of access points I have provisioned, which is 2, the number of clients, which is 11 and the number of devices on the 2.4 and 5 GHz channel. I can also view an activity log that shows me the amount of bandwidth each access point and client is using, along with the number of connected clients. Another interesting feature is the ability to import the floor pan of your location and view the Wi-Fi coverage. It's not entirely accurate, but it still provides a better understanding of what range one should expect for the 2.4 and 5 GHz frequency. You can easily view all of your connected access points and make a configuration change and perform software updates with just a few clicks. I currently have all of my settings on Audio, and the access point did a great job at choosing the least congested channel. One change that I would recommend is to change the channel width of the 5 GHz setting to VHT80 to get the fastest available bandwidth. This nearly tripled my internet speed. You can also view all connected clients and have the ability to block specific devices. I would like to see the ability to provision certain clients to a specific access point. 
without creating a unique SSID. This would be beneficial with stationary objects that don't move. There are a bunch of settings that I'll save for a future video, but in some, you have the ability to create multiple networks, such as an isolated network for guests and create a login page for them and limit their bandwidth. The settings are very customizable, so whether you're an average home user or an admin for a small business, you can set up Unify to suit your needs. Jumping into benchmarks, I connected an internal network speed test between my Mac Mini server and my 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar using iPerf. During the test, I remained in line of sight to the access point, roughly uh, 5 to 10 feet away from distance. As expected, the HD took the lead. I'm sure tweaking network settings would have yielded a greater result, but I wanted to ascertain the performance when all the settings are left on auto. The next runner up is the AC Pro, while the Airport Extreme did have a slightly higher speed on one test, the average is substantially lower. The Unify app, which I'll discuss in more detail, has the ability to conduct a Wi-Fi throughput test between the mobile app and the Unify controller. I am performing this test on an iPhone 7 Plus. First, I'll perform the download speed test. Once again, the Unify HD took the lead. However, this time, the Airport Extreme was the next runner up followed by the Unify Pro. Based on my personal experience, the Apple Airport Extreme performs well upon close proximity, but the Unify Pro performs better when you are further away, such as a different room. Next, the upload test, initially at least, yielded a surprising result. The Extreme dominated, followed by the HD and Pro. The Extreme does a great job on close proximity, but the moment you add multiple clients and move to a different room, the speed exponentially stagnates. Using Wi-Fi Explorer, a Wi-Fi spectrum channel that I highly recommend, it can be noted that the Unify does a great job choosing a non-congested channel on the auto setting. The HD has a max rate of 1733 megabytes per second on the 5 gigahertz channel and 385 megabytes per second on the 2.4 gigahertz channel. The Pro has a lower rate which is conventional amongst most routers such as the Apple Airport Extreme. It has a max rate of 1300 and 216 respectively. My late 2016 MacBook Pro 13 inch with touch bar has a max rate of 1300 megabytes per second, so I'm not able to receive the maximum performance offered by the HD. Overall, I've been very happy with the Unify platform and I'm looking forward on completing my setup with the Unify router and switch. The Wi-Fi performance is incredible and new features are continuously being added with periodic software updates. Pricing and additional information is located in the description. Please leave a comment if you have any questions and be sure to like and subscribe for future videos.